decided to bring the Targaryen box, and this is just straight out of the starter. I think I end up playing like a point down or something like that. It might be 40, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think the box is fine on its own, but uh, you'll definitely want to put some other things in there as you go along. But uh, for right now, I'm just uh, throwing them down and kind of seeing what they do. I think that Khal Drogo probably belongs in the Veterans. I don't really like him in Screamers at all. I think the Ko and Jorah kind of have their home there. It's almost like the box is built for you. This is taking forever. I must say. Hey, so uh, with this list here, um, kind of wanted to try out Jon Snow again. I haven't really played him in a while. Um, with the one five updates and the sworn bros going up a point it's kind of shaved an activation so i wanted to uh see how ghost factored in there also wanted to try out the new core and half hand uh, i liked him before but um there's always kind of a weird timing issue with him trying to uh figure out when to use his uh, once per game ability but uh, now that he kind of does stuff all the time um I like him a lot better um i think i kind of mismanaged him a tiny bit this game but um yeah uh got other than that i got sworn bros sworn bros crossbows uh three points left over for recruiters and captain in the crossbows all right so ben this is your first time on the channel i think we've had a game on here once before unfortunately after ben and i recorded audio for this some problems happened that didn't uh allow me to keep the audio so it's just going to be me right now but i do have a a clip at the end that I was able to salvage with Ben and myself talking about the changes to Night's Watch in 1.5.1, I guess. And uh, I think that's worth listening to if you uh, stick around for that. So we're playing on Game of Thrones, and uh, Ben recognizes that taking the maneuver position is pretty good. It's kind of like playing against Starks, where if you take that, you shut off some of the extras on their cards. Uh, but it does allow me to follow up with the uh, tactics position. And the Targaryen deck is quite powerful, but it has a lot of cards that are situational. So you want being able to load up on those cards uh, a ton is really good for me. So I'm, I'm happy to make that trade in the early game. This does allow Ben to get up on the objective that shuts off an attachment. So when we were choosing sides, I had forgotten that we needed to put the, or I forgot the step to put out the cards. So if I had seen that one come up first, it probably would have taken that side because right now, Call Drogo's pretty much shut down until I can get to that, and they're behind a wall right now. So it's not looking real good for him in terms of being able to get the most out of his use because he's a, he's a good a commander. His cards are pretty decent, and uh, his attachment brings a lot of power. So you can see that I've got Jorah's uh, unit of Screamers kind of running up the top here. The things that are difficult with the Targaryens on in the, the onset is trying to figure out how to actually unpack them. It's not that it's hard to unpack because you basically go anywhere you want to. But right now I've got a really weak unit that's, you know, it's hard hitting. But it's kind of, it's going towards two really combat specialized units. You know, we've got... Uh, two units of sworn brothers at the top there and th it looks like there's a rank missing but i think uh ben was painting those models so we just put little wound markers in there to to make up for them but to get back to what i was saying it's almost like uh i think if you've watched any of my free folk battle reports you'll notice that i have a real problem with cave dwellers in that just because they're fast i connect with them early and then there isn't a whole lot behind them to help them out uh, that's basically like the entire Targaryen faction right now, at least the Dothraki stuff, right? Uh, so I end up like Jorah's probably way too close to really for comfort for the most part, just because <clears throat> with having a six inch maneuver at the beginning, as long as you get within six inches, seven with Jorah, you're still getting there on, on, on a one. So there's no reason for me to be this close to any of his stuff. I think what, uh, probably would have been better for me was to split my stuff up really far and try to draw out all of Ben's units. But the problems that I can see with that is towards the bottom of the screen, or, or Ben's bottom most unit, 
is a, a unit of crossbowmen, so they can kind of deal with some of the problems or that I could create by spreading out a lot. So I don't want to section my army off that much, and I do have like the outriders going against the um, the crossbowmen right now, so that's probably not the greatest idea ever. Uh, two shooting units kind of going up against each other isn't really a good place to be. Um, one of the other things that I need to mention is I need to apologize for the table angle for the camera on this one. We're recording remotely at Noble Knight Games in Fitchburg, Wisconsin, and uh, I had a very portable tripod with me that I wanted to try out just because it's a lot less cumbersome than bringing, you know, my six foot extends to seven feet, I think, uh, tripod. Um, and uh, it, it just doesn't capture the table like the other ones do. So you'll see Ghost kind of pop his head out of the corner here. And uh, he's uh, he's trying to stay outside of the threat range of the Outriders. But I think we did some miscalculations in terms of the the threat range for them. Because it's, it's about 9 inches when they shoot for movement. And then it goes up to 15 inches. So I think we, we kind of re-measure that to make sure that Ghost gets where he needs to be, because I think the Outriders, if they get one good shot into Ghost, uh, then it's it's lights out for that dog. Um, the other part about this game that is a little funky is that we're kind of like straddling the the 1.5 to 1.5.1 rule change. So uh, Ghost right now can still take vows and still uh, doesn't allow defense saves, but uh, Ben's Quorum Halfhand uh, does have the cool like bonuses for influencing a unit to make them go faster and throw a bit a bit more dice. So now I've got the top of this turn and my my hand's pretty stacked with stuff but I it, it, it's all like claiming combat position type things or claiming the swords and uh I have some cool like later plans but I I think Right now, my, my hand isn't full of the cards that you would want to use super early, uh, so it's kind of like uh, the Baratheon deck in that sense. Not that they share a lot of the same triggers, but they do have a lot of, like, their their cards are kind of split into that early game, late game heat, and uh, right now I'm holding a lot of late game heat and not so much that early stuff like uh, um, Overrun or anything like that. But I think I'm hemming and hawing on how to unpack everything because I've got Khal Drogo sitting in the back and I don't want to give up a charge on any of that. And this is kind of the, the problem that I had talked about earlier where Jorah and them are just far too close because they don't, they don't need to be this close in order to connect. So I really would have liked to uh, to have Khal Drogo go first so I could get up further and shoot into the side. But I need Daenerys's influence in order to do that. So I take a really risky move here, and I'm I want to get Khal Drogo uh, freed up, so maybe I can charge the side with the screamers, and get enough wounds off of the Night's Watch to turn off that objective, or contest it so they're no longer controlling it, and then that'll let him do some more work to the other unit that they're sitting by. But it does open up my side to the other Sworn Brothers, and uh, with crit blow and sundering and all that. I mean, no matter what, if I'm on the side, they're getting me on a six anyhow. But this is some risky business, and Ben ends up rolling pretty decent on his armor saves, and I believe he passes the morale check on this one. So Jorah's Screamers uh, unfortunately don't do enough to really turn off the objective, so that's kind of a, a bad activation for me up there. And... Uh, Losing a lot of that Khal Drogo efficiency is really going to burn later on. But now Ben's left up to some choices where he can either charge in with the uh, Sworn Brothers that are uh, hanging out on the side of Jorah, or he can just activate his other Sworn Brother unit. There's there's tons of options here, and this is him measuring... Uh, Jon Snow is in that veterans unit in the middle, so I, I I know that I usually call out the deployment, but with the way that the table was set up, it just looked really strange, so um, I think now you should know where all of everything is for, for Ben's army. Jon Snow and the vets are in the middle, and then the two Sworn Brothers are on the edge there. 
So Ben opts to take the combat position to just to not give it to me. So he's giving up the charge on that other unit. So there's some 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 opportunities I have there. But this gets him some extra attacks that he might not have had and stops me from double attacking them. And Jorah's unit loses a couple wounds. Uh, I think we lose four or five in total. So it's not looking super hot for them. The Sworn Brothers didn't blow up their rolls or anything like that, but it still hurt quite a bit. And they end up passing morale. There's there's no no penalties over there or anything, so they're they're hanging out all right. So now I now I'm trying to figure out how can I take advantage of uh, Khal Drogo, and the hope was to try and get him far enough up to where I could uh, maneuver shift and then be hopefully be in the side of the uh uh sworn brothers that were just about ready to charge Jorah's unit but uh that doesn't quite work out so I back them up and they're they're sitting on an objective right now that forces a panic check on the enemy at the end of the round so I don't want to leave them there which is another like hard issue with the Targaryens right now is that you don't have a ton of units that want to sit on these objectives, and it's no matter how you shake it out. I mean, you could the one way you could change it is if you just built like a massive screamer army with no big units, like and outriders aren't big units; they're just a different unit, but no veterans or or flayed men or anything like that. And then maybe you'd have a better time on Game of Thrones because you have so many bodies, so you just don't care. But with this list, I really need to make up the deficit in scoring that I'm going to have by either stacking objectives towards the middle of the table, which I think I've done an all right job of, or just running a ton of extra activations that you don't care too much about. So I think Jon Snow is looking at possibly trying to long bomb a charge. The, the Outriders, if they get tied up in combat, they don't do a whole lot. And if you get into this like loop of retreating all the time when that maneuver position isn't available to you, uh, things get screwball-y. So I need to back up a little bit. I think that Call Drogo positioning, <clears throat> it looks a little weird, but I use Daenerys to get them to where they're at. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what my thought pattern was here. I think I said that I was fine charging and shooting over the wall on the side of the vets because I was going to be mitigating the bonus on their side and I was just hoping to get a big play next turn by uh, running into those guys and trying to get them off of uh, the objective that's shutting down Khal Drogo. And right now I think uh, I think Ben's just having some decision issues in figuring out what he wants to do. Uh, Jorah's unit's not really going to be doing much, and Khal Drogo's not threatening that upper unit of Sworn Brothers anymore. But after some consideration, he decides to just charge in and see if he can take care of them, because then it kind of puts the... If Jorah's unit goes down, it puts the Sworn Brothers that are on the objective in a better position, because they can turn, and then they'll get full value out of that wall instead of just having it kind of mitigated. And with uh, six plus saves, Jorah's unit goes down. I think we had seven wounds remaining in that unit, so I was hoping they might be able to stick it out one more shot, but it just wasn't, uh, they weren't long for this world, and that was me unpacking them into a really unfortunate situation. I think uh, when you have something like that going on where your opponent's got a lot of pressure at the top of the table, uh, you can, you can, uh, kind of switch your deployment as you're playing so that you can get into positions where you're taking down the lower targets and then he just gets to dirtle the whole time with his good units up there and uh, I think he played take the black here to heal up uh, the sworn brother unit that was on the objective because he kind of knew that they were they were going to catch some heat from Khal Drogo's unit. So I think my plans have pretty much fallen apart horribly now and I'm doing a lot of s crazy measuring here and line of sight checking because I think that I can find an angle with the way that Ben's ended his position to move up and not charge over the wall 
and get into the side of uh, the other Sworn Brothers that just finished off Jorah's unit. But I think after uh, screwing around with it and trying to make sure that the measurement's fine, that the only way that I can get to the side on them is by charging over the wall. So I end up opting for that line of play because then it gets me out of the line of sight of the Sworn Brothers that are on that objective. And the and I don't really like lose any um don't really lose anything by going into that unit. Uh Khal Drogo might be chewing on them for a while, but at least I'm I'm getting some some work done into a unit that's uh gonna lose that wall bonus. So after shooting in we take out a couple uh sw sworn brothers and now we get to use the order to charge. Uh, because these are veterans that Khal Drogo's on. It's a good unit for him in general. It's a lot better when he's actually got his uh, abilities turned on, because now we'd be going in on the side and vulnerable and all that other stuff. So we just so that everyone's clear on this one, at no point do I ever cross over the base of that Sworn Brother unit that's on that objective. The measurements were all planned out to where it wasn't going to happen. We had to thread a lot of needles, but we were able to make it happen. And I think on this one, the Sworn Brothers actually roll pretty decent on their armor saves, which was super unfortunate for me because it's more of just the same I wish Khal Drogo was on so I could make you re-roll all these. But that objective is really, uh, really raining on my parade, so to speak. So Khal Drogo just does not get the work done that he wants to. And I think this is... Uh, um, he, I think he played one of the Jon Snow cards here. At least I think he did. I'm not sure what which one got played here, but Ghost goes in and tries to perpetually tie up the Outriders for forever. Uh, so I end up failing my morale test by quite a bit. So Ghost goes in and does something like uh, four ex four wounds total, which is is no bueno for me. I'm not enjoying that at all. Um, but uh, this is also Ghost bonding with Jon Snow. So now that Ghost has got him tied up, Jon Snow, it, it could, um, oh, so this is what it was. It was uh, for the watch that he played at the beginning of Jon's activation, then chain activated into Ghost to have Ghost go first. So he was looking for a four, I believe, on that charge and ends up coming up just a, a, a one or two short. So he doesn't quite get to connect with the Outriders because I think he was hoping to do a lot or make short work of the Outriders since they were... Uh, not benefiting from the tree at all because they had that corpse pile, so there was definitely a potential to wipe that unit with just Jon Snow and Ghost's activation, but it ends up not quite working out, and uh, now the Screamers have got a decent charge when they want it, but I don't, I'm not in a big hurry to do that, so I end up activating Illyrio and getting him on the tactics board, or the tactics position, and uh, I think... I opt to vulnerable Jon Snow's unit because I think the Screamers can do a lot of work to them. They've got Sundering because I've got the Co on them, and uh, with vulnerable it should make it so I could take out quite a few of Jon Snow's units. I think afterwards I opt to change that to a weakened token because I have an Outrider Co on the Outriders as well, so that allows me to put the vulnerable token on them whenever I want to. So I don't really need the vulnerable token on them. And I think the crossbows, they they at first he was thinking they would be pretty safe if he marched up there, but the outrider or not the outriders, the uh, screamers uh have the potential to do enough damage to Jon Snow's unit where it's hard for him to recover. So he opts to play it a little bit more safe with them and maneuver them into a position and pivot them so that uh, they can basically cover the field with their shots. Or at least if, if things work out in a certain way, they can cover the field with their shots. And then the Screamers decide to unpack into Jon Snow's unit. And this is the you know probably the better... Uh, the better thing that I can do this game is just... I, Jon Snow failing that charge was just really good for me. So the this is where I say I meant to get this Outrider vulnerable token on there, but I just backed it up a minute. 
So John passed a decent amount of saves, but then uh, the vulnerable check really hurt him with the sundering, and they only passed one. So John loses seven seven bodies right away, and I think that they fail this morale check by just a tad. Oh no, they don't fail it, they pass it, but then Jon Snow gets them one guy back. So we all day we lose six bodies from that, or we, we take six bodies from that unit, so I'm feeling pretty decent about what happened there. Uh, the veterans are still really scary when they're missing ranks. I mean, they don't they don't really ever get bad. They just don't get they're just not amazing or anything. But they uh, they hurt quite a bit on that one. And I think he reflected a wound back on me with the uh, with the counter attack, but it, I ended up getting lucky and saving it. <clears throat> so going into the rest of Ben's business. I think he's got, um, I think he takes the combat. Maybe, uh, no. I'm not sure what he was doing here. But we get Bowen down on the coin. This gets some, some units back into Jon Snow's, uh, or gets some bodies back into Jon Snow's unit. And this is like, I know that most of the lists that I've been building lately have been containing two NCUs, and, uh, I like that for having a lot of business on the table, but there are things that I end up missing out on, like some last-minute crown zaps that can help out, or the if, if your opponent isn't being attrition very hard and you are, then they usually don't prioritize taking the money bag p position or the coin position. So uh, not having the third NCU to try and take one of those out and stop Jon Snow from healing back up isn't really the most... Uh, amazing feeling in the universe. Now, if we if we, we were playing Amon, which Amon, if he Amon seems like he's only really great when he's taking that coin spot because his healing is not that great otherwise, unless you're really down a lot. But if that was in there, then that unit would pro would be full by now, and and that's just not a good place to be. So definitely, if you're playing against Night's Watch and you're annoyed with any of the massive healing that they have at their disposal because of Amon, that's probably something you'll want to do, because Amon hurts a lot less when you're not taking that coin. So he starts out the turn with Bowen on the uh, on the combat position, and I think uh, Ben gets a lot of use out of that combat position, just because I, I feel like I'm always up against the ropes in this game, so I'm not, I'm having to make decisions to fix the problems that I've put myself into, instead of trying to swing an, an advantage that I have further in my favor. But Ben able, is able to really take advantage of that, and it hurts quite a bit. The, uh, the, the Jon Snow's unit, actually, it, it looks like I didn't really lose anything in terms of wounds on that unit, so I got super duper lucky there. Because I don't think I took a panic check or anything. So Danny is on the maneuver position and influences Khal Drogo's unit, and I, I feel like my best deal here is to just retreat out. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best position for me and for the future. Like if I go here, everybody rotates and turns the other way. Um, but if I and, and I'm still in line of sight of the Sworn Brothers that are on that objective. But if I go back, it it kind of makes it so that Ben has to make a choice. He can either have the Sworn Brother unit that I've been engaging. Uh, stay where they are and go for the objective that forces panic checks each turn, or he can turn to face me and just chase me down, and then that unit of Sworn Brothers is taken out of the game. So I think Ben's measuring now the just to see what the options are going to look like for him. Uh, this is a scoring game, and if Ben starts chasing me down, it's almost better for me because then he's losing opportunities to score. He doesn't have a ton of bases in his list either. I think he's only got one up on me. So if I start taking bases away because he's decided to come at me, then it means that he's not going to be scoring as many points, and that's better for me. But I think the ultimate thing he opts to do here is uh, not change the facing on those Sworn Brothers because he can just activate them in response to me retreating out like that and... Uh, and put them onto that objective. Which is what he needs to do right now, 
because if he doesn't do that, then Khal Drogo gets to charge them in the back, and it's no good. So I force an activation. It's not the activation that I, or it's not the choice that I wanted him to make. I wanted him to turn around so he would charge me, even though pinning down Khal Drogo isn't the greatest thing in the universe. But uh, it's still not. It's still not terrible. So. I think the I can't remember which card I had put on Khal Drogo's unit to influence them. Uh or they they have like a bunch of attachments, but I, I can't re quite remember what it was. It wasn't Adravat because I don't have the combat zone. But we shoot into the Sworn Brothers that are holding that objective down, and I think they end up bouncing the shots off of them and then not losing any guys for saves. Or and then since they automatically pass their morale check. Stand United Brothers triggers and heals Jon Snow's unit back to full. So all the work the Outriders or the the all the work that the Screamers did is just like down the tubes. So the charge on on that unit ends up taking out a decent amount of guys. We're we're down to just under two ranks now, and then they fail their morale test with which still keeps them at two ranks, which is unfortunate for me having called Drogo still. Uh, um, still turned off because they still control that objective but it's not a bad place for me to be and uh i think ben's active trying to see how the uh crossbows need to activate because the 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 thing with only having those four guys left in that or five guys left in that unit is that once Khal Drogo finishes them off he's not going for that objective he's going to be going for another unit so uh, he decides to keep them, or he, he, I think he was trying to figure out how to go with them, and then opted to activate Ghost instead, and then trigger, or do Ghost and John together, uh, which is fine for him, it's just because it, it means that, uh, the Outriders, I, I, honestly, I don't think it matters if he, if he bonds them or not, it's, he's just doing it to do it. If anything, it, it makes it so he doesn't drain activations. So here I use Illyrio's uh, ability to take the uh, banner off of Khal Drogo's unit and get them to go again to hope that they can do some work to the Sworn Swords. At least that's what I think I did. Yep, I take the activation, off, activation banner off, and then uh, since he doesn't allow them to go immediately after he does that, uh, ben sees that he needs to now get the Sworn Brothers turned around so that Khal Drogo's unit just doesn't delete them. And I think when he when he figures out that it, when he turns them around, he comes off that objective no matter what. Uh, he just accepts it because Khal Drogo doesn't do anything right now if he's engaged. Because Onslaught only triggers when I take the combat position and he can only charge, not like he does anything else. And then he only gives them sun or gives vulnerable out when they charge. So losing getting Khal Drogo's abilities back right now isn't the biggest deal in the universe. Um so I choose to activate Khal Drogo now and put some attacks into those Sworn Brothers. And I don't think we wipe the unit on this one. I think he only loses a couple and then passes a morale check. So it, it's not normal. Normally, I would be upset that this had happened because I would have just liked to wipe the unit and be done with it. But to be honest right now, I've got some heat in my hand, or some cards, I guess, some some good cards in my hand that are going to make my next turn uh, quite quite impressive. I would say it's the second most impressive thing that happened all this game. And Khal Drogo's still on full rank, so that's really good too. I'm, I'm liking how that's looking right now. But the uh, the crossbowmen, they opt to shoot into the Screamers, because I think they I think Ben wants to free up John's unit, because right now they're just they're sitting they've been sitting there for probably a little bit too long and he wants to get to the middle objective if he hasn't taken it already. I can't quite tell. But the middle objective is worth a ton of points, and there's he he does have a lead on me right now, and I think he's positioned to get a bigger lead on me once this turn's done with, because uh, he goes up to three after killing that screamer unit, and now he's set to gain three more at the end of this turn just from the objectives that he's holding, and uh, that's that's not the greatest thing in the universe for me. 
so the Outriders opt to retreat now that since Ghost has activated. I, they The Outriders won't get to do anything, and I don't really gain a There's not a whole lot to be gained out of here other than just I lose a point. So I don't think the Outriders retreating was the greatest idea in the universe, but it is what I did. Just because they'd been they'd been stuck in combat with Ghost for so long, it was just difficult to to kind of get my head straight on what I should do with them. Not like there was much more for them to do in general. So that was the the panic check that had happened at the end of the turn because uh, he owns that top objective. The rest of these were, I, the ones that the Outriders were sitting on healed D3 at the end of the turn, so that was another one where, like, maybe I should have just stayed on it so that Khal Drogo's unit could heal up a little bit. And then I don't remember what the one is at the very bottom of the screen. Maybe you can tell what it is from where you're sitting looking at it, but I, I can't right now. So I, this is where, like, I get to throw my thunder around. So uh, Danny influences Khal Drogo's unit, takes the combat zone, and chooses to play Adravat, which gives me Sundering and Critical Blow for the entire round with that unit. So now Khal Drogo is attacking into the Sworn Brother unit and has quite a bit of, quite a bit of uh, combat prowess now, especially since there's only like five or six dudes left in that, in that Sworn Brother unit. So ben, ben ends up failing enough to leave a couple guys in there, which I'm not super stoked about, but then he rolls snake eyes on the on the panic check, which is huge for me because now I'm playing overrun, and I get to pivot and then try and make a charge into the uh, basically wherever I really want to go. But I think I'm going for the crossbowmen here because I feel like they're a low they're low hanging enough in terms of stats to where I can. Uh, to where I can get at them. And I, I'd stop myself because it's not an activation that I get to make, so I don't get to maneuver first. I, I I did catch that before I did it. It was just, I was really excited about what was going on here. So with the influence, I roll a one, which would disorder me, but with Denaria, she lets me re-roll the, uh, lets me re-roll the, uh, the charge. So I get in there with no, uh, no problem. I, I mean, I don't have a, I'm not disordered or anything. And since that unit's off the objective, I get to vulnerable the unit of crossbows. I think I play another card here, but I'm not exactly sure what it was that I played. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just not 100. The, the Targaryen deck is still pretty new to me, so I don't exactly remember what it was that I played on them. So Khal Drogo hits with all of his attacks and gets a couple critical blows in there. So the, um, the uh, crossbows are... are taken a lot of a lot of damage here um i think they end up not saving a single one so that was 11 saves they had to make and they unfortunately passed their panic check which leaves them on the one uh the one guy they have left which i think might have been a night's watch recruiter so uh it could have been a super huge play for me to get me up to three points, which isn't the greatest position to be in, but taking out two combat activations from my opponent was kind of like a, a, a sweet little maybe I can rubber band this game. But Khal Drogo's still sitting there with the um, with the uh, the crossbows. Now, it's important to know that Khal Drogo hasn't activated yet. He got those two big swings off of just uh, off of just the combat zone. So Adravat's a really great card when you can use it, especially in this type of scenario. Uh, it kind of shows some of the explosive power of veterans. As I, I think Screamers can do this stuff too, but the veterans are a pretty decent unit. I don't know if they're quite worth the 10 points that they have, but I, it's really tough when you're not when you're not utilizing the, the shoot and then charge. They don't feel like they're worth 10 points. And uh, this is Ghost coming back to bite me for being a dummy. Uh, I should have just stayed on the objective <clears throat> and tried to... Uh, I should have really been D3 healing back the Outrider unit so that Ghost just stays there forever until I decide to do something with him. But uh, Ghost gets to now pin down the Outriders again and stop me from scoring that zone, or stop me from scoring that uh, that objective again. 
So now I think Jon Snow's kind of confused on what he wants to do. He's sitting on a pretty decent objective, but I think he's got a feeling that if he doesn't get into Khal Drogo's unit, then they're just going to kind of run the table. So he opts to uh, move them up. I think this might have been... I wanted to say that it was a now is watch or uh not or watcher on the wall, but I didn't attack with anything to proc that out, so maybe this is just him uh marching as part of their normal activation onto the objective. But I think he's drifting trays a lot. Like I think we both know where our ranges are going to take us, so it it, it looks like in the onset like sloppy play. But I think we both do this, where we, we kind of have the gist of where they're going to go, and we don't need to be exactly precise to get there because we know that the movement was legal. I think after a while, when you've played the game enough, you kind of get used to the way things are moving. I think in a tournament, though, I'd probably be a little bit more, um, a little bit more tight on that because I don't want my opponent coming in with thinking that I'm screwing around with stuff when I'm just... I just feel like the movement is a little bit more fluid than what people give it credit for. So Khal Drogo finishes off the crossbow unit, and I decide to get further away from Jon Snow's unit, because right now they're holding that objective, they're shutting me down, I don't have any more activations this turn, and Illyrio's already done what he can do with Khal Drogo, so I just kind of back him off into nowhere universe. <clears throat> And I don't know exactly where I need to put him now to try and get back in this, because I don't. I think I'm at the point now where I don't. I don't think there's a way for me to get back into this game with the way that I only have. I only have two units left. Only one of them can really do anything at all, and we've got a couple turns left to play through, and uh, and I just don't know if Khal Drogo's or if the Targaryens have got the 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 activations left to. Uh, to really make a difference here in the way that the game's playing out. So now we got Bowen taking the maneuver to get Jon Snow a little closer to Khal Drogo's unit. So he, he's leaving the objective, of course. He knows he's got the first activation next turn, so it's not really important to him uh, scoring that objective because he knows he knows that I can't catch up with him. But this does it, it does give me like the ability to maybe get a window to catch up to him if I get certain things to happen. So maybe taking the objective wasn't the greatest. But Illyrio gets the the missive, and I thought I cleverly put a token on Jon Snow to stop him from doing something, uh, but I didn't. So he took it off with the coin. So maybe it wasn't Jon's... Maybe there was a Watcher on the wall or something that happened. Something weird happened to get John onto that objective. Maybe it was his last activation for the turn and then he went with him again. But uh John Snow is able to get into Khal Drogo's side, which is, you know, more more of a mistake on my on my on my part here. But surprisingly Khal Drogo for taking a charge on the side does all right and only loses one horse. And the vets have a decent morale, so they don't uh, they don't really lose anything else. Well, they they don't fail their morale. So now we're we're headed into turn five. I take the panic check on the outriders, and they pass just fine, so that we don't have any problems there. And Khal Drogo gets his like dream moment cleared off of him with having all those uh, attachments and uh, and influences coming down on him. It was I th feel like it was a fun activation. I think. Uh, it's the things that people will remember with the Targaryens is just kind of clubbing through a bunch of stuff. So I think Ben just drops a horn that wakes the sleeper on Ghost because, again, this is where Ghost can still take vows. Um, and Jon Snow gets to swing into the Khal Drogo vets again on their side. Which, again, still is, I, it was just a, a horrible mistake on my part that I left these guys looking the way they were. I was kind of feeling like maybe the end of the game was already, like, predetermined. And uh, I just just decided to leave them like that. And they, they, they don't do as well as they did the last time and end up failing enough saves to wipe the unit. So uh, Ben goes up to 8 points, and I'm still sitting at 3. So with my... 
my lone outriders, I feel like there's only one thing I can do to save face in this game, and Daenerys is going to crown zap the dog for a minus two. And there's the snake eyes, which I think is probably the best moment in the game. Whenever you can crown zap a dog to death, it's the greatest thing in the world. But uh, the camera battery on this is about to die. Uh, ben wins at the end of this game, but uh, make sure you stay tuned for our discussion on Night's Watch, which will happen right after this. So that was Snake like eyes uh, on that one. <laughs> that was moment number <laughs> number one of the game. So like I had two things go nice for me. It was just a, a little too late. Yeah, the the real kind of gut punch about that too is I I was sitting on um, it shall not end until my death. I had that in my hand, and I was just so awestruck by the snake eyes. I just really forgot to uh, to play it there. Um, yep, and I, and I think what happened now is the after celebrating the death of Ghost, which I am so happy that this didn't <laughs> happen while that was going on, but the camera battery died and I didn't notice it. But there wasn't much more to write about in that one. I think you ended up uh, just getting John on the uh, on the other objective and then ending your turn to score out. Yeah, that was all that was really left to do in that game is just uh, not let it go another round. I think I took the maneuver um, and just, yeah, moved him right up on there and so ended it up. I think, I think the, the Ice and Fire community, for the most part, has gotten past the the shock of the uh, the Night's Watch changes. How do you feel about them as a faction right now? I know that some people are still trying to live those glory days of running like three or four units of Sworn Brothers and then just like not taking a ton. But I know with you, you like to experiment a lot with your lists. How are you mm -hmm. finding Night's Watch in general right now? Um, uh, you know, I, the 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 change in points in my opinion i mean it basically shaves an activation off of each one of your lists um with the combination of bowen and the sworn brothers um i still like them i think they've gotten a lot of quality of life upgrades um like corin i think is really good now uh because he does stuff in the interim between him you know jumping off a cliff um they've been my main faction now for a little while i'm preparing them for adepticon here so i've been, I've been jamming a lot of them just kind of trying out different things um, I think they're in a good place. They, you know, are an elite army. They just, they, they do a really good job at every aspect of the game. Um, they struggle a little bit, I think, against, um, a couple of the Stark lists and the Free Folk a little bit, just because they get out-activated so hard. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think their, their core identity hasn't really changed. Um. I don't think, think you can. It's almost like their core identities become a little more reinforced. Yeah, yeah, and the way that the points shake out too, I found because um, I was experimenting with like lists where you just don't take attachments, and it would let you uh, sneak in another unit of Sworn Brothers in a lot of instances, and I was kind of enjoying that. But I think now the way the numbers shake out, it a lot of times you're left with like you know, three, four, or five points after you put all the trays in. Um, so it really kind of uh, forces you in a lot of ways to take uh, to take attachments that you might not have otherwise. Um, I've been basically just putting, like, recruiters in everything, if I can. The new watch captains are okay. I haven't been super overly impressed by them, but, you know, they uh, they, they come in handy maybe once a game. You know, if you have shields and uh, shields on your unit and top of the round, you can, um, you know, pop their order to, to block D3. It's kind of nice. Um, I think the fact that it is an order that activates at the top of the turn is a little bit awkward for timing. But, um, yeah, overall, um, I don't think they've suffered too, too much um, as a faction, just with the, the point changes. And, you know, all things being honest here, um, six points was probably a little, uh, little generous to the Sworn Brothers. Yeah, um, it was a little egregious. I think they were easily the best six-point unit in the game. But I think that yeah, that ship, I think that that kind of that taste is kind of mellowed in everyone's mouth now, and they they realize it. But I think the Night's Watch are still good, and yeah. I also wouldn't wouldn't 
uh, I would would ask people to not take this outing of the Targaryens as a as a, as like some kind of signal of a faction strength. I think they've got a really solid deck, and I think that you need to. They're just they're kind of like free folk almost, in that you really need to play a lot of games with them in order to understand what they do. They're like instead of having the like free folk. And Targaryens are really similar in that they need to have very curated actions. It's just that, uh, or intentional actions, I guess, where the Free Folk, you have to learn how to leverage the numbers to do that. And with Targaryens, you have to learn how to leverage the speed to get the most out of those activations. And I think uh, watching the factions come out like the Baratheons to Targaryens, how like Baratheons are almost like really... I won't say autopiloty, but you they kind of feel like an army you can like set it and forget it for a little while because you don't have a ton of triggers that are you don't have a variety of triggers and your units basically like they take hits and they don't die. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean the first time we uh we played I was playing Night's Watch again uh, into your Targaryens and I mean it the game literally came down to the last die roll. If I pass my morale check, my unit survives and I win on uh points. If I fail, you kill me and table me, uh, which is what ended up happening. But, um, you know, so yeah, I think they're good. They, they're they really capable of a lot of, like, as you saw in the that one turn, uh, some pretty explosive activations. Um, and obviously, they're very maneuverable, being that they're all on horses. Um, I, you know, I think that it'll be interesting to see what comes out for them down the road. Um, I'm assuming... You know, with uh, the way the story goes, they'll probably end up with some infantry stuff, which we'll see. But um, yeah, I don't know. I like them. Um, I think they're uh, it's an interesting faction to say the least. Well, thanks for for doing the commentary with me on this one. I know we'll probably be playing a game here this Friday too that we'll probably try and record. So we'll have another one kind of in the bank, and we'll try and get this one out a little sooner. But uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching the video, everyone, and we'll see you next time.